Greetings from Arizona. This is Tony Kuiper. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make true saturation masks that accurately reflect saturation at the pixel level and how to use them. But first, in a previous blog, I discussed problems with Photoshop's HSB HSL filter. It's an older method I use to create saturation masks, but is not very accurate. The problem is very easy to see in the Granger chart image shown here. It has 100% saturated colors zigzagging across the middle and completely unsaturated colors at the vertical edges, white on top and black on the bottom, both of which are 0% saturated. There is a smooth transition from saturated to unsaturated colors as you move vertically from the saturated center. To make a saturation mask using the HSB HSL filter, first create a new blank layer Merge Visible, then go to Filter, Other, HSB, HSL. In the window, choose RGB as the input mode and HSB as the row order, and then click OK. Go to the Channels panel and duplicate the green channel. This is the saturation mask from the HSB, HSL filter. The Merge Visible layer can now be deleted. In a saturation mask, 100% saturated pixels should be white, and anything less than 100% saturated should be a shade of gray, proportional to its level of saturation. So, the center zigzag should be white, the top and the bottom should be black, and in between there should be a transition from white to black. And this is exactly what you see for the light colors. But the transition is totally missing for the dark colors. The mask is completely white at the bottom, indicating 100% saturation, even in colors approaching pure black, which is 0% saturated. So there's clearly something wrong. The HSB HSL filter shows all dark colors as being 100% saturated in the Granger chart. A similar problem can be seen in an actual image. Again, I'll create a saturation mask using the HSB HSL filter. New layer, merge visible, and just run the same filter again. Duplicate the green channel and delete the merge visible layer. Again, the lighter colors, like the oranges and blues, seem to show the proper degree of saturation in the mask, but the dark colors look wrong. The dark colorless gray cloud and dark mountains, both of which have very little saturated color, should be very dark in the mask, but are lighter than expected. And zooming in on the dark mountains shows obvious white islands where there is a high degree of saturation in the mask for colors that are nearly black in the image. So the bottom line here is that the HSB HSL filter is simply not a good way to make saturation masks. It makes masks where dark colors get incorrectly mapped as being more saturated than they really are. True saturation masks are actually quite easy to make, though the method is not entirely obvious. Start with a selective color adjustment layer and set the color change to absolute. Then for all the colors in the drop-down menu, reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magentas, move the black slider all the way to the left to minus 100%. For all the non-colors in the colors drop-down menu, whites, neutrals, and blacks, move the black slider all the way to the right to plus 100%. With this adjustment in place, the composite image now shows what the true saturation mask looks like. Since all the color has been removed, to make this an actual mask, simply duplicate any color channel since they're all identical at this point. Once this mask is available on the Channels panel, the Selective Color Adjustment layer used to create it can be deleted. 
This duplicate channel is the true 16-bit saturation mask. Notice the smooth transition from saturated to unsaturated colors in both the light and dark tones in the image. This is what a saturation mask should look like. Completely saturated colors are white, completely unsaturated colors are black, and partially saturated colors are shades of gray that properly transition from white to black. Now, let's do the same process on an actual image. The Rapid Mask 2 module has the selective color adjustment already programmed into the SAT source menu. Once again, it's easy to see that this true saturation mask got it right. More saturated colors, like the orange and the clouds, are very light in the mask. Unsaturated colors, like the gray clouds, are dark gray or black. Partially saturated colors, like the blue sky, are intermediate shades of gray. And all dark colors, like the mountains, are appropriately all dark in the mask, indicating that they do not contain saturated colors. By comparing this saturation mask to the one created with the HSB HSL filter, the differences are quite obvious especially in the dark colors of the image. The HSB HSL method maps dark colors as being more saturated than they really are, and they end up being too light in the mask. But the selective color saturation mask gets it right, regardless of pixel brightness. Based on results like these from other images, I'm convinced that the selective color adjustment is the best way to make true saturation masks. Just like there are two main types of luminosity masks, lights and darks, there are also two types of saturation masks, saturation and vibrance. And again, just like with luminosity masks, they are the inverse of each other. Inverting a saturation mask creates a vibrance mask, and inverting the vibrance mask creates the saturation mask. The Rapid Mask 2 module can also create the vibrance mask on the fly using the Vibe option in the SAT source menu. Armed with these two true saturation and vibrance masks that accurately reflect true saturation in the image, it's quite easy to control image saturation to your liking. There are just two techniques to master, and the Rapid Mask 2 module makes both of them very easy. The first technique is for controlling oversaturation. Usually there are just isolated areas of oversaturation in the image, often the result of aggressive processing. Rather than making a global saturation change to correct this, it's often easier and more precise to simply paint this away with saturation painting. Here's how to do it. Use the Rapid Mask 2 module to create a saturation painting layer. This creates a blank layer set to saturation blend mode. It selects the brush tool and sets the foreground and background colors to gray and red respectively. Saturation blend mode makes it so only the saturation value of the pixels on this layer affect the image. For example, gray paint has a saturation of 0%. So if gray is painted on the saturation painting layer at 100% opacity, the result would be that the color would now be 0% saturated. In other words, all color would be removed. If red, which is 100% saturated, is painted at 100% opacity onto the layer, the colors become 100% saturated. By using a lower opacity brush, smaller changes in saturation can be achieved. This is gray paint at 50% opacity. The saturation mask takes this color painting concept a step further. To make use of it, create a true saturation mask and load it as a selection. Hide the marching ants, set the color to gray and the brush opacity to around 10%. Paint through the active selection on the oversaturated parts of the image. The active selection, even though the borders are hidden, guides the paint to just the most saturated pixels of the image. Keep using additional brush strokes until the desired level of saturation is achieved.
I'll turn the visibility of the saturation painting layer on and off a couple of times. Look closely at the changes in the orange clouds. Sometimes saturation painting by this method lightens colors a bit too much. That's easy to fix since the pixel layer allows the painted areas to become a selection. Control command click on the pixel layer thumbnail to load it as a selection. Create a curves adjustment layer so that the selection becomes a mask. And then just lower the brightness a bit using the curve. The mask on this curves adjustment layer, because it was based on paint applied to the saturation painting layer through a true saturation selection, shows just how precise this selection was at guiding the paint to just the most saturated colors in the image. Hopefully this quick demo provides a good overview of how accurate saturation painting can be for removing excess saturation in an image once the true saturation mask is available. Undersaturation in an image is often more global. The image simply looks dull when it doesn't have enough color. While additional saturation could be painted in with saturation painting by painting with red instead of gray, large parts of most images can often benefit from a global increase in saturation as long as it's restricted to less saturated colors, which is exactly what a vibrance mask does. So for undersaturated colors, it's often better to do a global adjustment with an adjustment layer rather than a precision adjustment with a paintbrush. Here's how to do it. Create a true vibrance mask. The initial vibrance mask will usually be too revealing, so it's usually necessary to narrow the range a bit. I actually like using the Zone 8.5 or Zone 9 Vibrance Mask as my starting point for enhancing undersaturated colors. You can see how this mask is most revealing in the gray clouds and very nicely conceals the saturated orange clouds. Now create a hue saturation adjustment layer with the chosen Vibrance Mask as the layer mask. Then just drag the saturation slider to the right to achieve the desired degree of saturation across the image. Because the mask ensures targeting only unsaturated tones in the image, it's often possible to push this much further than expected. The Vibrance Layer Mask ensures that the adjustment only affects the less saturated tones in the image. More saturated colors will not receive the adjustment, so they won't oversaturate with this process. So this saturation boost only affects dull colors in the image because the vibrance mask directs the adjustment primarily to unsaturated pixels. If the effect is a little too strong in some areas, put the adjustment layer in a group with a white mask and paint with black on the mask to control how much of the effect you want to show through. This is the classic mask in the mask technique where painting on the group mask is used to further refine adjustments created by layers within the group. I always experiment with these two methods when I'm near the end of processing an image. It's often a subtle change, but an important one for bringing out the best color. Just remember, once you make these highly accurate true saturation and vibrance masks, there's just two main techniques for using them. Saturation painting through a saturation mask controls oversaturation, and a global adjustment through a vibrance mask corrects undersaturation. It's impressive sometimes how much saturation you can actually pump into an image and how good it looks once you control the process with these masks. I hope you'll give it a try and let me know how it goes.